I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the Holy Heist uh, booster box I got from uh, clockmancardvault.com. It is the second of the Unlikely Heroes block for the Spoils card game. The first uh, set release was uh, Shade of the Devoured Empire. Uh, a few weeks ago, they released the final set in the block, uh, Ungodly Mess. I purchased a lot of my Spoils cards from Clockman Card Vault over the years, and they've always offered really good prices. If you spend $75, you get free shipping if you live in America. They do pre-orders. They've thrown out a lot of free stuff to the community, so I'm a really big fan of them. I'm going to drop a link in the description of the video. But we're going to crack open some packs. Probably for the first pack or two, I'll go through the individual cards. But once you know we kind of see a mix of the cards, I'm just mostly going to focus on the rares and the ultra rares. So let's see what we get. So I'm going to open these up. Take off the plastic wrap. box. I'm going to be opening these up upside down because it's easier to film that way. So I'm going to do the best I can to make sure you guys can see these. All right. So here's the first card. It is an Arcanist. It's a common. One of the nice things about the Spoils card game is that it's always had really good art. hard to read a little bit upside down, but I'm going to give you guys each a chance to look at each card before we get to the rares. To some uncommons. All right. Now we got a couple rares here. Move these to the side. We got a gargoyle of Cathedral de Mal for the bankers, as well as a, I can't read that upside down, but a big micro majig for Gearsmith. And then finally, we got a token for a micro majig for all you gearsmith micro majig players crack pack number two and as i do more of these they'll become more entertaining and better shot and better edited but i'm just getting started So far, I haven't had any cards with bad framing. I know in some of the sets, Spoils have had some past where uh, the cards run through the border and everything. Everything's looked so far so good with these packs. Some of the earlier packs I had weren't quite uh, organized well, so you could open up two packs basically with the same rare that you had in the prior pack in a row. I'm hoping that that gets fixed as the game continues to grow and they release new sets. A resource for bankers. That is really cool art. I would love a play mat of that card's art. Alright, we got a couple of rares here and another so for one is I got another micro magic token. Those are always good to have, but I actually like the pewter tokens they give out. So I'm gonna move these cards to the side. We got some special forces. It is a warlord character. You can pay three, and then the effect is uh, this turn this character gains covert and also loses a life, but it's a 4 3 1, so it can afford to lose the life with covert. That'd be really nice in a warlord rush deck because it only has a cost of four with a threshold of two. I also got a profane uh, proposal. proposal. That sounds bad. Uh, we're not going to fix it in post this time. Um, it's an extra cost. you got to pick one opponent. You're then able to mess around with them. Good in control. Kind of pricey at a cost of six. But spoils, you're able to get resources out there pretty quick. 
Went through a few of the packs. Kind of going forward, I'm going to focus on any rares or ultra rares I pull. Nice. Prime Titan. That is a really cool card. And then another Micro Magic token. And a couple of the packs I had, well, a couple boxes, I didn't get any ultra rares, but I did pull one of the full art, full art clowns. And I've always had a dream of building a clown deck. So I'm hoping that this box has an ultra rare. A Warlord resource, that's really cool. Again, like I was saying, some of these things where they're not really a good split of the packs, I keep getting Micromagic tokens. And I mean, it's nice to have, but every pack's had one so far in this box. So I'd be surprised if I get anything good. My last box gave us a bunch of uh, staple resources, but I have a daughter who's three years old. And for people who've played the spoils for any amount of time, you know that the resources, especially the staple resources in the past, have been a little bit risque. I'm actually kind of glad to get some more uh, resources that are easier to play in front of my daughter. I'm not really a big fan of some of the uh, sexual risque content in the game. And then on this one, I was able to get an Unlikely Heroes faction card. I know a lot of folks online are just trying to build decks where this is really efficient. And I'm going to try to build a deck as well. And when I do, I'll be sure to post about it online. One of the resource, uh, staple, re well, not a staple resource, but one of the resources for the rogue faction. And then let's see what we got here. There is a foil, which is always nice. See if this shows up good on camera. If you can see the foil in this. And then the rares. They've been making some changes to the game. And traditionally with spoils packs, you got a single rare in each booster. I'm hoping that they move the packs to being 15 cards to be similar to Magic, but keep the multiple rares in each pack. Makes it easier to be collectible, but also you've got that 15th slot for ultra rares, which they've introduced into the game. Again, another foil. I've never really been a huge fan of foils in card games, but they're popular and I guess I learned to live with them. When I played the Lord of the Rings card game back in the early 2000s, I actually built an all foil deck. It's when I had a lot more time and money to play card games. All right, here's one of those tr new resources I've been talking about for staple resources. I like these a lot better than the ones that came from the original seed expansion. Three foils in a row isn't so bad, but I'd much rather pull ul full art ultra rare. All right, got a few more packs to go. Rudo Man God. I actually bought some of these for my Warlord deck from Clockman. It's already half four, but it's always nice to have some extras for trade. He's a really good card. When I talked about some of the risqueness, again, when the game first came out in 2006 and I was in my early 20s, I thought this was a lot cooler now that I'm in my 
early to mid 30s and I have kids. But I did pull a rare foil, so that's four foils in a row for me, which is not bad. But I'm still hoping one of these final three packs actually has an ultra rare. Otherwise, uh, one ultra rare out of four booster boxes, not the best ratio. So maybe we'll get lucky. Yep, no ultra rare this time. We got two left. I did get a Thieving Casino. I love the art on this card. And again, I want a lot more of these new resources because these are the resources I want in my house. Two more packs. Come on, Ultra Rare. Let's see if we luck out. No Ultra Rare and a screwed up card. So some of the printing on these cards, at least that card, it looks like it got cut on another card. Yeah, so you can see like Spoils Leap Gaming information it's back here. So there must have been multiple of those printed in a row and some of the glue got off. Let's see what rares we got. Fabishite Temple. Nice looking card. And our last pack. So we're hoping for that ultra rare. I don't think it's going to come. But maybe we'll luck out. Ooh, the Gearsmith resource. I like that these are actually uncommon. makes drafting a lot easier. These are cool cards. All right. And again, no ultra rare. So I, out of the four booster boxes I got from Clockman, I got one ultra rare. It was a clown, which is really nice, but... I ordered a, I'm going to order a couple of boxes of the Seed Saga and Ungodly Mess, and I'm hoping I pull more Ultra Rares out of those. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to try to produce a lot more spoils content on this channel, as well as the blog, and I'll see you next time. Again, check below in the details if you want to get some spoils. I always recommend buying from Clockman Card Vault. He's a member of the community, doesn't run it really as a, it's a business, but he does it more as a way to support the community. And when Spoils was kind of wandering in the wilderness for years, you know, Clockman Card Vault in Hour 11, that's where you went to buy the cards. So I think we should support people that have been supporting the community. Um, thanks for joining us and have a good day.